Good morning, everyone. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Natalia Gunina, and I am the head of foreign languages and professional communication department here at Tambov State Technical University. And um, it's a great honor for me to start the plenary session. And um, but unfortunately, we haven't been able to invite many of you today as Elena has already said, due to the pandemic restrictions. We have a, a very close circle of friends today here, but I'm really happy that the other participants can join us online via Zoom, or they can watch the live streamed event in one of our social networks. So the topic of my presentation is becoming an autonomous learner and researcher. And um, today we all know that the role of English is becoming more and more important and uh, truly English has become the language of, um, re of publishing. Researchers, all researchers, young researchers and uh, those who have already established their position in science, they have to publish in English and uh, we have to accept this fact and um, that's why it's really important to, to be fluent in English so that to use it as a tool and to be able to give a presentation in English, to write a paper. So, Quite often, this fact that uh, English has become the global academic lingua franca is, sorry, is supported by the following statistics. For example, 27,000 journals included in the Web of Science indexes are published in English. However, only 99,000 peer-reviewed scholarly journals are published in other languages with French, German, Spanish, and Chinese contributing to the most. So this brings us to the conclusion that English is a way to reach a broader academic audience. But you might ask me, how is it connected to the topic of my presentation? Why we all need to become autonomous learners and researchers today? And the answer is obvious. As I have already said, English is a tool which you can use to become successful in the world of science and research. So let me start in, in my presentation today. I'm going to address the following questions. The first is what learner autonomy is. The second is autonomous learner core competencies. I will also talk about some, about some benefits of autonomous learning. And of course, I will give examples of the tools which all you can use to become autonomous learners and researchers. So let's start with the definition. So as you can see, the words autonomy and autonomy, they are derived from Greek words autonomia and autonomous, where auto means self and nomos means law. If we look at the definition in the Cambridge Dictionary, you will see that autonomous means independent and having the power to make your own decisions. So what is learner autonomy? Sorry. So the, the phrase learner autonomy was coined in the early 1980s by educational guru Henry Holick, who defined it as learner's ability to take charge of his or her own learning. In other words, the autonomous learner takes a proactive role in the learning process, generates ideas, and takes advantage of learning opportunities. So quite often we might see the following terms, self-access learning, independent learning, autonomous learning. Although they seem quite similar, there are some differences. And first we will look at the terms self-access learning and self-edited learning. So the term so self-access learning appeared in the 90s and its introduction was connected with the, the start of self-access centers at the universities where students had access to learning materials. So, in 1992, Benson made a distinction between self-access and self-directed learning. Self-access learning often refers to 
the design and organization of resources, while self-directed learning involves certain skills that the learner needs to apply in a learning situation. So we will also look at the dif distinction. Sorry. It stopped working. <laughs> Valois, can you help me? I, I don't. Oh, oh OK. So, sorry, um, now I will, so, I'm sorry. Now we will look briefly at the distinction between the terms independence and autonomy. And the term independence means freedom from reliance on others, while autonomy in this context makes, is, means ability to make one's own decisions about what to do without being influenced or instructed to do. So the term autonomy has come to be used in the five ways. The first is for situations in which learners study entirely on their own. The second is for a set of skills which can be learned and applied in self-directed learning. The third is for an inborn capacity which is often suppressed by institutional education. The fourth is for the exercise of the learner's responsibility for their own learning. And the last one for the right of learners to determine the direction of their own learning. So in other words, the autonomous learner should be able, should play an active role in their learning. They should make decisions about their own learning and they should reflect and evaluate their own learning. So um, as an autonomous learner, you are supposed to develop a, a set of certain skills which are quite obvious and I'm sure that you all know them. The first is of course creativity, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, digital literacy and the, the last but not least is learning how to learn. So this is basically the most important skill which learners have to develop. They should know how to learn, what tools to use in order to progress. So uh, this brings me to my next point, which is the autonomous learner core competencies. And basically there are five of them. So an autonomous learner should be able to identify their own learning needs, to set learning goals to address those needs, to identify resources, both human and material, to help achieve their learning goals, to apply the appropriate learning strategies, and to evaluate the, the outcomes of their learning. And of course, the benefits of autonomous learning are obvious. So the first is time, and we all know that time is the most valuable resource today. So as an autonomous learner, you have access to the array of digital tools which you can use at any time uh, whenever you find it convenient. You also take full control of your studying and uh, you can study at your own pace and uh, mo as the researchers say, the most learners study at best when they do it at their own pace. So the other benefits of autonomous learning, learning are, are, are as following. Of course, you become more active because you take responsibility for your own learning. You set your own goals. And this is quite motivating because you need to find the tools how to achieve your learning goals. And as a result, you become more engaged with the learning content. And of course, it encourages you to explore and it prepares you to make use of your knowledge and skills in the future. And when you achieve this, you get this feeling of accomplishment and you feel good. And all this increases return in your investment in learning. So as an autonomous learner, you have to grow, go through a certain cycle which involves planning, monitoring and control, and of course, evaluation of your progress. And um, now I would like to talk about the autonomous learner tools and researcher tools which you can use in order to take advantage of them and 
achieve your learning goals. And basically they can be divided into three groups, the tools which you can use uh, in order to progress in your language learning, the tools which help you to develop certain research skills and self-assessment tools. Uh, because self-evaluation is a really important po point which quite often is overlooked by many students, uh, but uh, I will show you why it is important. So let's start with the language learning tools and the one which I would like to recommend to you is a website which is called vocabulary.com and it's actually it's arranged as a website where you have several tabs and for example if you click on the dictionary tab you will see the word of the day and some links to learners for example links to commonly confused words if you tap on the if you click on the learn icon there is a choice of different options for learners the first is take the challenge so you can play the challenge and start mastering some words you can try some featured activity you can join other users and participate in games and you can practice some vocabulary lists for example if you click on the list idioms and expressions you will you will be offered to look at some idioms and choose their definitions. For example, you make a mistake and choose the wrong definition. So the red cross is next to the wrong one and it is in red ink. But when you try again, and if you are successful, you see that top dog is a person who is in charge. And on the right, there is an example and some information about this idiom. So the resource is quite useful. It's really engaging and it's fun. And uh, once you get to a new level, so it's arranged as a game, you get a badge for this, like you see at the top. Here is my account and I've got a badge for doing some activities. So it's fun. So the next um, resource, which I think is also useful for learners, is visualwords.com. So actually, it's an online graphical dictionary where you can look up words to find their definitions and associations. I know that we all, I don't mean teachers, teachers love dictionaries, <laughs> but students, unfortunately, <laughs> do not find them exciting. Although when I was at school, I really loved dictionaries, and that was my favorite pastime, studying the dictionary. But unfortunately, modern students are slightly different. But for them, there is a choice of new dictionaries. For example, a graphical dictionary is good fun. So there you can look up words to find their meanings and associations with other words and concepts. For example, I choose the word cell. I typed it in the space above where the, it says visualize word. And it produced a diagram which is quite similar to a, a new net and it actually it helps people to understand how the words associate and what is more it helps to understand how you can use them and in what context for example if you click on one of the circles I clicked on the circle cell theory and the, uh, this explanation popped up and it says that cell theory is used in biology. It is a theory that cells form the fundamental structure and, and, and functional units, blah, 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 blah. So you can find out some information about the term and how you can use it in what context. So that's, that can be interesting. I also would like to mention some traditional learning tools which we integrate in our studies like uh, uh, Quizlet and Woodwall are my one of my favorites. They always add color and fun to classes, but you can use them on their own because they are based on flashcards and it help they to help you to memorize the words. So he, the links are here. Also, I would like to talk about the tools um, which can help you to develop as a researcher. And uh, the one which I want to mention, and uh, it was created quite a long time ago, more than three years, and um, uh, the creator of this tool, the professor from our department, Ritslav Petrovich Nidrot, initiated this uh, pr project. Unfortunately, he passed away last year, 
but still we can use his products and take advantage of them. So what is the academic discourse organizer? It's a website where you can produce your own article. So it has uh, uh, the tabs like my archive, my library, and my projects. My archive is uh, a collection of files which you saved as documents. My library is a collection of your resources which you can add to different papers which saves a lot of time. And my project is the current paper in progress, the paper you are working at at the moment. And the, this website helps you basically with two things. Firstly, it automates your writing, so it can count words automatically. You can prepare headline keywords and abstract, and it will be generated as a Word document after after you finish the article. And it also helps you to organize your writing, which is very useful for young researchers, those who are not quite familiar with the structure of the paper. So it navigates you through the paper and makes sure that you haven't omitted the most important things. So finally, I would like to say a few words about self-assessment tools. Uh, if you are not using any digital technology and stick to the old school approach, writing a paper uh, or using <laughs> a computer or a pen, you can use a checklist and checklists are very helpful. They help you to make sure that everything important, everything what you need to include is in your paper. And uh, Another tool which is also great fun and great help to learners is online voice recorder. It's called Voca Rule and learners can use it in different activities. For example, you can record yourself and then you can listen to yourself and you can check your mistakes. You can ask other students or your speaking partner and having a speaking partner is also a great thing. I know that lots of teachers encourage their students to find speaking partners so that to practice language outside the classroom. Uh, and of course, in order to assess your product, uh, you have to use some criteria. For example, you can assess the meaning, the language use, the delivery, and all these tools are available to the language learners. And I would like to conclude my talk with uh, this quotation by Nick Pichi, who said, the future really does belong to the autonomous learner. And I fully agree with this statement because using technology helps you to develop learner and research autonomy and the ability to discover for themselves. Thank you for listening. Here is a list of references. And if you are interested, I can upload the presentation in our group in social network Vkontakte. Thank you very much.